In the last episode, we began our journey in the safe confines of Candlekeep. Nestled atop a cliff, the Citadel had shielded us for much of our lives from the outside world's woes. However, that was not to last. We were beckoned prematurely by our foster father, Grian, during our daily chores. In a matter we were told was urgent. Oh, my child, I am glad I have found you. After some strange encounters with what seemed to be low-level bounty hunters making several attempts on our lives, I have a blade with your name on it. We rushed to Grine, who led us out of the keep under the guise of night. Shortly thereafter, he informed us, if separated, we should meet with his allies, Khalid and Jahira, at the Friendly Arm Inn. Before he could further explain about our unexpected journey, we were waylaid by enemies and forced to defend ourselves. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourself. You're perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. After a short exchange between Garion and this malevolent man in armor who demanded to hand us his ward over, we were set upon by the marauders. At Garion's behest, we were forced to flee and Garion himself, although putting up a valiant fight, lost his life, protecting us as we fled into the night. Disoriented, after the ambush on Gorion, dawn has broken. Hey, uh, it's me, Imowen. Our old friend Imowen approaches us and tells us she saw the events of the night prior and apologizes sincerely for our loss. We find out she had read a letter on Gorion's desk that she suspects may still be found on his body. If we choose to admonish her for her transgressions and send her on her way or not, it matters little as the headstrong Imowen will join our party either way. We check our map and see just a stone's throw north is the site of the ambush in which Gorion was slain in a circle of stones. Before we make our way to the site, we are attacked by a a wild gibberly who goes down without much of a fuss. Heading closer to our foster father's sprawling corpse, we have the unenviable job of checking his person for his effects. We find out on Gorion a small sum of gold, a dagger, his scroll, and an unidentified belt. Before we read said scroll, we think it best to loot his assailants and make for safer ground. We find the Morning Star, presumably of one of the ogres in the attack, and various leather armor, swords, and bows, which are standard fare of the bandit thug that were killed. Instead of heading east as we were urged to do so, we try our luck back at Candlekeep west of the assault and pray for safe harbour. After four hours of travel, we see the keeper of the portal, standing guard out front of the citadel. Hold, travellers! Before you will be allowed entrance, you must donate a tome of great value to our libraries. We explain we don't possess a book which he demands for passage into Candlekeep, to which he apologizes. He does admit he recognizes us as Gorion's ward, yet we still cannot enter due to sanctions placed by the High Ulrant, whoever they are, utterly cut off by any last lingering thread of comfort and safety. We take a last look at the Citadel of Candlekeep and have no choice but to head east. Further along the coastway, we decide to open Grind Scroll for further clues as to what his objective was and hopefully a clue to the Armoured Fiend's identity that attacked us. The scroll itself is written by what seems to be a friend of Grind's that talks in riddles about some kind of ominous threat and being too neutral during the impending dangers. He then urges Grind to leave Candlekeep at night as a moving target as it is harder to hit and points him towards the friendly arm inn where Khalid and Jahira, which Grind mentioned to us before his passing, will help in their secretive quest. The letter itself is signed off with I'm getting too old for this, E, which just opens more questions. Who is this mysterious E? What danger are we in? Why are people trying to kill us en masse? These questions all beg answers and our only lead is the friendly arm in. 
With that, we press on east in its direction. We are then stopped by a man named Colsed, who tells us there. there were strange noises in the woods last night and we are more hospitable than the last two people he met. Well, we know what the strange noises were in the woods, unfortunately, firsthand. So we question Colsed what he was doing in the woods if it's so dangerous, to which he admits he used to be a trader in Nashkel until he lost everything due to the iron shortage. This iron shortage we keep hearing about. We further question him if the people he spied were in fact Khalid and Jahira, as we have no idea what they look like. Yet he says they are not. These two people were rather rude, and we shall pass them soon enough as they are just a stone's throw away. If we ask for his further assistance or bid him adieu, he does rather craftily give us one final piece of sage advice. Make friends where you can, as traveling alone is almost certain death. However, surround yourselves with like-minded companions, lest you risk making enemies in your own party. Surely we can all get along. He tells us we're on our own and luck be with us. We can tell him rather cheekily thanks for nothing, to which he says, not a promising start, and trudges off. As we make our way up the road, not a few feet north of Colshead stands a man named Zar and a halfling at his side, which he no doubt just spoke of, and quite poorly, I might add. Approaching the halfling, he points us to his companion Zar instead. Ye already be disturbed, now leave me be. Your company be toil enough as is. Who says, Montalon, you are so aggravating. Tis disturbing to my demeanor. Outburst aside, Zar shrewdly divines we have been in a scuffle and offers us potions as aid. However, there's a catch, as he then proceeds to infer as suitable payment for a few paltry potions that we travel with him to Nashkel to meet the mayor of the town, Baron Gastkill, about this iron shortage we keep hearing about. If we tell him we have our own troubles and are not interested, Zar suddenly becomes quite hostile, stating, Oh, you won't do this for me. You're bad, and I'll have someone hurt you. You'll see. That one's a meanie, Monty. Not a nice child at all. To which Monteron exasperatedly exclaims, Now you've gone and set him off. Blasted mage will blether for hours. Off with ye. I'll not suffer the both of ye. And they depart. However, as we were just advised on the boon of having a full party, we reconsider the offer and tell them we have someone to meet and ask them instead to join us, to which Zar warns us they have precious little time, yet agree to our terms. It should be noted, this playthrough is cinematic in nature, and for people to take in the main story quest beats. As such, we will only take on a core group of followers who can progress with the main story and not instead deviate for companion or regular side quests. I think it's best we save them for their own standalone videos. So now, from one man to four in a short period, our party is filled with two wizards and two thieves. Not exactly balanced per se, but better than nothing. We then head north east up the path towards the Friendly Arm Inn. It's then we bump into a man named Binkos, who tells us of caravans raided near Beragost before popping off down the trail. From the Stone Circle, we must continue east to the forest before north towards the Friendly Arm Inn, as it's inaccessible at this time. It's then we're stopped by another stranger abruptly. Oh, there, wonder. Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Who asserts that only the desperate or deranged travel alone these days. Extremely wary and slightly offended, we tell this unknown man pestering strangers about their mental state may not seem well adjusted itself. To which he agrees with us, telling us just north is the friendly arm in and says he is certain we shall find trustworthy friends waiting for us before bidding us adieu. But who is this man? It's a welcome change of pace. He didn't attack us like others querying our business as of late, but he seemed to know about our journey's destination and the friends we're meeting too. It feels like we are part of a bigger game here. A pawn in a chess game and, maddeningly, the players are still unknown to us. Heading east in the dark, we see a signpost guarded by a pathetic pack of gibberlings. That we make short work of. The pillar 
which shows us Berigost is south, the friendly army is north, and the coastway is back west where we came from. So we continue along the path, making haste and hopefully leveraging nightfall to go further undetected a little better than we did the night before. Just north, a man named Aeon calls out to us and says, Hello, pal. Keep your voices down, warning us of beasts with better hearing than we. To which we ask, which dangerous beasts? And he tells us he's seen an ogre mage in the area who tore through his party and that he usually just gets a jog on when danger approaches, probably for the best, and we leave him to his hunt. Just above him, we spy a sign that confirms we're about to reach the safety of the Friendly Arm Inn. After eight hours of travel, we reach the inn and a cutscene showing off the large building stature from afar. Before we head into the Friendly Arm Inn, we spy a guard out front who asks us if we know the rules. I should have joined the army. When querying what he means by rules exactly, it seems it is a term used rather loosely in this area. What he meant was the Friendly Arm Inn is neutral ground, so no fighting, and if we do, out we go, and tells us also to enjoy our stay. We then come across a commoner just north of the gate who says it's being pretty quiet as of late due to raids. The second commoner tells us a short story of a mage who could dispel armor and his prejudice against magic. Note to self, stay away from mages. A further commoner we bump into also tells us they're worried about the rotten iron that is coming out of Nashkel mines and thinks war with the neighboring arm is on its way as tensions are higher than ever. The guard just in front of the stairs of the friendly arm in states there will be no fighting. Any aggressors will be punished by the full extent of the frontier law. And we agree we've been thoroughly warned. It's then as we head up the stairs, we're approached by a human mage named Tarnesh, who asks us what our business is. Hi, friend. We can either be direct or brush him off, saying we are just road-worn travellers looking for a place to rest, not trusting his sickly sweet introduction. He apologises and says he is looking for us and queries if we are from Candlekeep. This is not Khalid nor Jahira. Maybe it is actually one of their friends. We can continue to be evasive or direct. The outcome, unfortunately, is the same. In this case, we say Candlekeep. Never heard of it. Tarnesh begs to differ and tells us not to move as he has something for us. Right then, he casts Mirror Image and we realise he's turned hostile. So much for neutral ground. The guards, I might add, sometimes intervene, sometimes they don't. It depends on the day. But nevertheless, we back up for better footing and Tarnesh casts fear and renders most of our party adult, leaving Imowen to fire true with a bow and a helpful guard to cut down the slippery mage. On his body, while the party recovers, Imowen finds 58 gold, some mage scrolls, and a bounty notice which reads, Be it known to all of those with evil intent that a bounty has been placed on the foster child of Grian. Last seen in the area of Candlekeep, this person is to be killed in quick order. Those returning with proof of the deed shall receive no less than 2,000 coins of gold. As always, any that reveal these plants to the forces of the law shall join their target in their fate. What a wretched bounty to be put on our heads, and it seems they have more information on us as time goes on to boot. Coming to gather ourselves and finally head inside the friendly arm inn to rest the spell. As soon as we gather our party and venture forth, we are approached by a man named Jopi, who confides in us that his uncle resides in Baldur's Gate and he can't get there to see him. Inquiring why would they cut off the roads, he states that the bandits are fiending for any iron they can get their hands on. This iron shortage seems to have far-reaching effects. Checking out the Friendly Arm Inn, we see we're in a big open main room full of patrons dining and drinking all manner of fermented beverage. We approach the closest patron named Welp, who seems more than lightly inebriated. I need some ale. <sighs> who informs us his fork and tankard are breaking apart again due to poor iron quality. This is really getting out of hand. As we head to the bar to speak to the publican about a room and wares, we spy on the west side of the room a man and woman named Khalid and Jahira, to which Khalid remarks upon closer inspection that we look familiar. 
Uh, calm yourself, dear. We must proceed c carefully. With the air of Garion about us, although Jahira says that that would be a slight on Garion, saying they are old friends of his and he is not with us, they can only assume the worst. They then say they have promised to Garion previously to be our companions if needed. However, we are free to choose our own party as we are of age. They also speak of the iron shortage. Everyone, it seems, including Zara and Monteron, have spoken about in Nashkel, and that they are to meet too with the mayor, Baron Garstkill. It seems this Garstkill is gathering up adventurers in an attempt to solve the crisis. Although we can instead dismiss Khalid and Jahira, they will be unable to be made companions in the future. How long must we wait here? Things stir to the south as we sit. Instead, we invite them to our party, and we can now have Jahira, the human fighter druid, and Khalid, the elven fighter, on our side, giving a much needed balance to the party. Before we head out of town, we speak to the publican, Bentley Mirashade, to sell some of our wares. With the party restocked, we leave the friendly arm in and head south towards Beragost. It should be noted there is a lot of content, characters, items, and quests we will be skipping over to streamline the story. However, I advise you to speak to all NPCs and explore all buildings in the friendly arm in or any area. Our main quest update saying we have little left to do but devote some time to investigating the cause of this iron shortage. So we should travel south to Nashkel. It seems we're not going to learn any more about our attackers, but can deal with the immediate threat of the Iron Crisis. Heading south to the closest point on our map, the forest we came from, we retread ground back to the pillar with directions and were attacked by three nasty gibblings, followed by a duo of kobolds with arrows that nearly dropped Monteron in his tracks. Luckily, we fell the kobolds and Monteron is healed by Jahira with her much welcomed bevy of priest spells. We then bump into a man who urgently tells us he must be off as the town of Beragost is preparing for war against neighboring territory of Arm. It seems tensions are rising by the second in Baldur's Gate due to this iron shortage. And before we head to Nashkel via Beragost ourselves just south, we end part one of chapter one in our Baldur's Gate main story quest. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification to stay up to date with the rest of the story as episodes are releasing weekly. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Traveler.